Hello, David. Hello. How are you? I'm living the dream. Okay, good to hear. So today I'm going to be a little bit provocative. I don't want you to talk to me about technology, neither sustainability, but I want to know you with your experience, your extended experience in the a and industry. Uh, what is your belief about the future of the industry? All right. So I'll try to be a little bit personal. And um, I really do believe that aerospace is about connecting people. It's about making travel easy, about people meeting other people and breaking the barriers of knowledge intimidations. I do believe that it's not a game sport that is reserved for rich people to travel, but that's something that enables the vast majority of the populations to get connected together. Unfortunately, if we look forward, we need to change the way we fly, very simply. There's absolutely no room to fly on jet fuel. We've become addicted to jet fuel. Uh, there are a couple of solutions, whether these are sustainable aviation fuel, whether these are hydrogen powered aircraft, whether these are electrical aircraft, I don't know. And I do believe that everyone in the industry has realized that and is moving to the world in the right direction. So we do agree on the fact that uh, on the same target, that there is a journey. What will be the first step you would like to take all of us on? Well, I think the first step is the realization from a human standpoint that we need to change. So now the question is, um, okay, you've seen with this air show that we're seeing a lot of increased orders from both sides of the Atlantic, some next generation travels, but this is, these are the common technology. So now what we need to do is engage on new aircraft programs for the next generation uh, travels. And uh, I believe we are seeing some that are going out the door right now. Uh, some of the VTOLs like uh, Joby Aviation, probably that's going to be one of the first uh, to fly an all electric aircraft. Once we see this aircraft flying with no noise, uh, you know, on, on electricity, uh, the public will notice. And the public will notice that it's a, it's a changing game in the way we fly. And that in turn will bring the other guys, the big guys, uh, to actually transform the way they develop aircraft and make that a uh, reality. So I'm quite confident actually about the future. Last question, which is a combo question. So um, we were talking about the future and everything that you've mentioned, we're looking at uh, maybe 20, 30 years timeline to, to have a zero emission fuel. In the meantime, we have all of these fleets that are basically legacies that uh, we need to also make sustainable. So, for all these existing fleets, what is the start small you will recommend? Will it be on the supply chain? Is this where we need to put the effort? Is it on the way we produce? Is this on the way we maintain? I think it's uh, none of this, if ah, I may. Go ahead! Greenhouse gas emissions comes at 95%, not on the way you design an aircraft, not on the way you produce an aircraft, but really on the way you operate your aircraft. Yes. Okay, so if you want to have a meaningful impact, that's where you need to start. Uh, and there are a couple of ways to do that. Uh, air traffic management rules, uh, flying information. Uh, that's the potential of decrease of 20% of the fuel burn, right there. Uh, implementing uh, direct navigation systems. Uh, these are simple rules that can you help you win a couple of percentage of uh, fuel burn. There you go. Okay, so back to the discussion we had a year ago about uh, enabling the after sales uh, with new tools to do that. This is still very much in your roadmap then. It is very much in our roadmap. And uh, you know, leveraging all the data, the, what we call the real world evidence in our own jargon and that's our system. Looking at what comes from operations to better make it fly is what we do. So very soon we'll be able to air digital twin or in service and after sales. Well, we prefer to call it a virtual twin because we believe that more than purely digitalization, it's also about the combination with real world data and the full behavior of the system that we want to simulate. But yes, we are seeing that it's not the future, it's the it's past not. for us. Yeah. Okay. Well, the past informs the present, so we'll be looking forward to making that happen with you. Thank you. I'll see you again, maybe in less than a year. <laughs> Let's do that.